Creatine, one of the most effective supplements known to man. Creatine. 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 This is what happens to your body if you take five grams of creatine every day for 30 days. But there's three things nobody ever talks about in regards to creatine. There's no we, okay, does that include us? Yeah, like we've said some what of this people? stuff because yeah. you guys have me. Okay, I know. so <laughs> thank God for that, right? Um, Methylation. Benefits? You don't hear a lot of that. Well, what cognitive benefits? Oh yeah, that was number one. Oh, is it? Uh, yeah. Okay. So you know, okay. So first off, creatine. Um, good job. Andy. Everybody knows it's good for muscle building and for strength. That's what it's been marketed to forever. That's what uh, all the early studies showed. But now we have studies showing all kinds of incredible uh, benefits. Um, and it's one of the most, if not the most studied mm. supplement uh, that there is. There's, th there's lots, hundreds of peer-reviewed uh, research on creatine. And we're, we have now data showing clearly yeah. it helps with cognitive performance. Short-term memory Did they first find that when they were uh, working with vegans? Yeah, vegans were where they first saw this IQ boost. Yeah. Um, because they're not getting much creatine from food, right? You get it from animal sources. Now, your body can synthesize creatine uh, by combining certain amino acids, but uh, we know this with supplementing creatine that you just taking more of it tends to give us more benefits. Um, and so with vegans, they saw this, this boost, but we see this across the board. Most people, when they take creatine, we see this kind of measurable, not huge, but measurable improvement in cognitive function. And it's probably even better for people with impaired cognitive function, people who feel uh, foggy or absent-minded or people with dementia, mm -hmm. Alzheimer's, we're starting to see research on, on that. Now, one of the reasons why it does this is creatine in, it increases the amount of available um, energy that your cells can use, ATP, which is a primary source of energy for your cells, all your cells. So when you have more ATP, all your cells operate better. So your brain essentially has more available energy to think and process. So this is why we see this this benefit. You know, uh, uh, offhand, do you know the difference like in comparison to somebody who has like a, a regular omnivore diet versus somebody who is on a vegan diet with the differences? You said it's measurable across the it's board. It's bigger. It's bigger with vegans. I know, yeah, I know. Yeah, much, much Double bigger. I don't know. I don't oh, okay. know. That's no. what I'm asking if you But know. it's much it's much bigger, at least measurable IQ. But it's still measurable even for somebody who's on an omnivore diet. What you see with every everyone else is an improvement in short-term memory is what you tend to see. Mm -hmm. uh, is, is just, I, would, just, I would imagine, too, I, I don't know if they've, they've actually teased this part out, but uh, it makes a difference, too, in a caloric deficit, right? I mean, I would think if you are... Well, the lower, less creatine you have in your diet, the more you'll benefit yeah, from... That's what I'm saying. So, like, yeah. if you're on a calorie-restricted diet, yeah. even if it is uh, a, a balanced diet, I would still think that you, you'd have some but more... But just, there. you know, again, like, uh, most of the studies done on creatine show about five grams a day. Um, you would need to eat I think like three pounds. Maybe Doug, you could look up how much creatine red is in meat? one pound of red meat. I thought it was one gram. I think you would need you. You would have to eat more meat than anybody will eat. Than most people will eat. So mm. getting I thought, it was the, like a, I thought it was like a gram per pound, something like that. Maybe I'm not. I don't remember. But uh, what does it say? One there? to two grams. Yeah. So per, per pound. Per pound. So yeah. to get five yeah. grams of creatine, you'd have to eat something like three to five pounds of meat. Yeah. Which Oof. nobody's doing. That. No, I mean, no, nobody does that. So no. unless you're going. So just so for people to know, because sometimes people are like, "Well, I eat a lot of meat." You still will benefit from supplementing with creatine. Actually, it's more like one one gram per pound. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so good. five pounds of meat, which nobody's eating. So eat. that's number one. That so, is number one. What's the other ooh, thing? What about tells you? Uh, uh, improving methylation? Oh, that's good. I didn't put that there, but yeah, you know, um, it Bonus does points. help with people who have methylation issues. This is a a a, a process uh, where your body. Um, Are you adding that as a fourth thing? Was no, that I mean it's you know I could talk about that. No, but I mean people, was that one of the three? No, it wasn't. Okay, no. so you're adding yeah, so it's so a fourth. That yeah, would be a fourth. it's a cool thing to bring up, but most people hear that and it's just, it just glazes over. Yeah, uh, yeah, unless they've been told to have methylation issues. Yeah. Um. So yeah, not that. I just not, found out about that one, so it it's like, not that exciting for most people. Yeah, I, so. I would think that one of the other ones that not a lot of people know is uh, the benefits in advanced age and muscle. Um, retention. No, no, no. Um, that's also positive. That's true. But the one I I'm thinking that a lot of people don't know about is its effects on depression. Uh, it is actually a measurable effect on hmm. depression is being currently researched as a potential adjuvant, uh, therapy. So people taking an SSRI get better results when they take an SSRI with creatine. Hmm. We have studies on that. And then we have studies on creatine just general, uh, with the depression. It seems to improve some of those kind of physical depressive um, effects that people have. So it's like a, wow. it's a very natural, healthy 
antidepressant, which yeah. is kind of cool. Well, do you know? Interesting. I wonder if those those are teased out of the people that are actually taking creatine and working out or just taking creatine. Just taking it creatine. By itself. That's it. Because th that's got to have a compounding effect. Of if course. You, if oh, yeah. A lot of people that take creatine also are, are lifting weights. Listen. And lifting weights, we know <coughs> the positive benefits of that. The data suggests, the data on exercise, especially strength training, suggests that three days a week of strength training is more effective, uh, significantly more effective than an antidepressant, like a, 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 a drug. Right. So that's what the data shows on that. But no, what I'm talking about is just creatine. They'll just take people who have low levels of depression, give them creatine, and they see a measurable result across the board. A lot of people don't know that. It's it's got this kind of mood boosting, hmm. mood lifting effects. Uh, and then the third one. The third one. What is the third thing that uh, nobody says? Decreases pain. No, no, that's a that's a good question. Yeah, I, I, I wonder would, because make your muscles joint look pain better. and uh, just like intramuscular fluid, and I wonder if it, there's some kind of I analgesic. Wow, effect. that's great. I bet you. In fact, Doug, why don't you look that up? Creatine and pain uh, perception of pain or pain tolerance. Uh, I bet you probably it's a good guess, Justin. That's a really good one. We'll see. Pulling stuff out of your ass. I know. He said methylation. Yeah, I know. Like, what did you take this morning? Dude, this guy's what, are you, what are you supplementing with this morning? Peptides, yeah, dude. What are you supplementing this morning with? What did you say there, Doug? Yeah, so may potentially increase pain tolerance by reducing inflammation and potentially acting as a mild no analgesic. Shit. Wow. Look at this guy. Look at that. Well, that's I think we found a new person to do the fit tip in the morning. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's all I got. Too that's, far. I, 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 I do one a year. Good job, guy. Too far. <laughs> Bro, I beat you guys at, at, at a horse one time. I mean, I should go play basketball. At the other. That's, that's, Fair a, that's a good comparison. Fair. That's a good comparison. Yeah, is right. Hey, so, Fair analogy. Um, all right. So, by the way, you're, take, you're taking the gummy creatine? Yeah, well, all this, creatine, all this creatine talk right now and- I like their, yeah. his gummy cratines. Oh, They're really, really good. I haven't yeah. missed a day yet. <laughs> you take your I, haven't missed a, I haven't missed a day yet. <laughs> Lee, hey. hey, true story. I My whole life, I'm the opposite of you. I, I totally understand the value of creatine, yet super inconsistent about it. Yeah. Most I ever was consistent was um, when I would go on a cut during comp during competing time, so I'm already like super measurable. Yeah, taking, yeah, that was yeah, the yeah. best time ever I was on creatine. And I was really good about when I went into the cut, I would I would make sure I was on the creatine. But you know why I did it? Yeah, so you weren't so flat looking. Yes. I, know. Mm. I noticed a difference in because one of the hardest parts, and I'm going through this part right now again, because I'm in this cut on this this series right now, is man, that limbo phase of depleting your you don't see yourself get shredded yet you just no feel flat. Yeah, yeah you look that. worse. You're not it's, filling out your and shirt. I know, I know that's like 90% of the population where people pivot out and go like, oh, this is not working because yeah. you look worse because you're all, all those muscle bellies are depleted because yeah. you're running on half a tank all the time and you're trying to shred body fat. And so the creatine would at least help kind of fill my butt muscle bellies up with fluid and give me a little bit better look than if I was completely. We'll get there. Actually, I'm going to talk about that okay. at the end too about okay. that. Uh, but yeah, Legion crushes it with those. Cause you eat them all the I, time. I don't uh, miss. I have lemon a, flavors out there. Lemon I have, drop. Yeah. I have yeah, a yeah they're good. All right. So, so here's the third thing that nobody says about creatine and mark my words. I'm going to say this and it's true and just wait, they're going to start marketing exactly what I'm about to say very soon. And that is of all of the potential supplements you could take for fat loss. Creatine is the most effective, for period, the, end of story. Uh, for the muscle building. That's exactly. right, yeah. because first off, the there's a myth around supplements that they burn body fat. They make you, you burn more calories. Stupid, stupid, stupid. They don't do that. Um, uh, some of them might make you eat less in a short term or give you a little bit more energy because you're stimulant. But the whole like they burn more body fat or whatever, they don't. What'll burn more body fat is speeding up your metabolism in a real effective way, not in some like fat oxidation, what up 3%, whatever way. Like really speed up the metabolism. Nothing does that better than building muscle. And there is no better muscle building supplement than creatine. So as a fat burning supplement, creatine is actually amazing. So you take it, help yourself build muscle, set your metabolism up in a way in a place that's a faster, then do your cut, watch what happens. You could also make the case too uh because it it's already proven too to help retain muscle when you're in a calorie deficit. Of course. So leaning out Keeping that muscle is going to help, right. help, so you could totally throw in that. Now camera. back to what you said about the muscles looking fuller or whatever. Sometimes yeah, yeah. women are afraid of taking creatine because they know that creatine will cause a little bit of weight gain on the scale. Yeah, the, the thing is like bloat. Yeah, so to the tune of you know, average woman might gain two to three pounds uh, with by taking creatine, maybe one pound. They're like, oh my god, I don't want to do that. Uh, and then they'll hear, oh, it causes water retention. Oh my god, that's even worse. 
it's two things. One, it's not water retention like you're used to with bloat. Bloat is outside the muscle. It's what makes things look smooth and puffy. Creatine is intracellular fluid. It's hydrating, right? So here's what happens. You gain two or three pounds on the scale, probably more like one pound. Your muscles look fuller, yeah. rounder, and leaner. Yeah. You also, by the way, it Better causes- shape. It causes more intracellular fluid in your skin as well. Maybe Doug can look this up. Look up creatine for skin. It is an incredible supplement for skin health and oh, producing youthful, uh, your skin looks more youthful. So when women take creatine, their skin is more hydrated. Their muscles are fuller and feel firmer. And yes, the scale goes up a little bit, but throw your scale away because what it's basically telling you is you've gone up in hydration. It's a great supplement to hydrate. Your body. Jesus. Yes. A massive commercial. Yeah, it's for, a huge for commercial. Creatine. Yeah. I, know, I can't wait yeah. to see. Now. Hey, listen, remember we <laughs> said we first, sold creatine. All the, marketers, <laughs> all the marketers are going to start saying that to sell yeah. more creatine. What's it say there? So Doug? it may help maintain the tone and volume of facial muscles, thereby reducing the appearance of sagging and wrinkles. Oh, yeah. so that's it, that's going the other way. Yeah, that's it's like, also that, but it's also good for skin. Interesting. For skin. I've read data on that. So, wow. Yeah. Look good, go. good, good stuff. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Wow. So that is so, pretty. So what do you do? Are you doing by the way, the data on creatine shows five grams. There is some data that suggests that some people may benefit from as Higher. much as 10 grams yeah, I remember reading that. Uh, for cognitive uh, performance. So uh, I'm only even a little bit more. I'm only in five, yeah. if that's the question. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I, so I, I've protein, been taking, <laughs> so here's what's too. funny. Go ahead. Just It stimulates uh, your cells of your skin to produce more collagen. Boom. There you go. Yep, I, know okay. yeah. I right. believe you. Yeah, Don't you is. wish we sold creatine? Yeah, I do. I do wish that. Yeah. <laughs> so we can make 15, we, our 15, sponsor 15% sold. margins. I know. <laughs> yeah, <dude. laughs> I know. I've been trying to get you guys to make yeah, a supplement we, with me for yeah, so long. Yeah. Almost, almost. I know. Uh, almost you know, what's funny too is my my uh, addictive, uh, you know, obsessive nature with supplements uh, mostly has caused me harm. But in one case, it's caused me the benefit, which is creatine. I haven't stopped taking creatine since yeah. I was 16. Since you were like, uh, yeah. 16 years 16? old. Wow. I've never stopped. Never, never, never stop. I, I actually wish I have like had written down like I don't I think I've ever been super consistent other than that period of time. Mm, yeah. I've always I, actually right now with the gummies thing has got me. I mean, it's easy. Like I have it's I, gummies. Well, I've got them everywhere too. So I have them here. I have them in my bedroom, and I have them down in the kitchen. It's just like yeah. it's like at any. And I'm like, oh, I haven't taken it yet. It's just. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I, it's brilliant it really it really is it really is brilliant but I gotta be careful though because I've, I've been gumming everything and realize well they do have calories yeah. so it's like and I'm now I'm yeah. on this cut right 30 now 30 of them yeah, that I'm counts. A, we're like 300 calories with the gummies a day <laughs> it's a justify it because it's all it's like, low it, calorie if you take the recommended dose yeah, Adam. Yeah, it, <laughs> yeah, it's, like it's only a five, I think it's only like 5 calories or something like that yeah it's nothing it is. Yeah. well no it's it's 5 per so it's it's 30 30 calories but that's for still nothing that still is not much yeah, but you're eating those but if I'm doing this plus all the all the organic if I want to uh, quickly, you're up to like two, 300 calories. Yeah. But gummies. the fact that I've been taking it for so long has probably benefited my organs, my liver. I have the, the genetic, uh, mutation that where I don't methylate very well, but I've never suffered from methylation issues, probably because I've taken creatine forever. Have you guys seen the data on creatine and, um, sleep deprivation? No. Mm -hmm. So when you're sleep, there's all, they're always trying to find a way to help people. This is for employers, especially the military. What do we do when people are sleep deprived to improve their cognitive performance the day after? Creatine is one of the most effective things hmm. to help with sleep deprivation and some of the effects of uh, a lack of sleep. Hmm. Kind of cool, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I know. know. I know. Yeah. One of my favorite so supplements. We didn't, get, supplement. we didn't get the best of sleep last night. My, Max again uh, uh, threw up. What's going on? Hey, sorry to interrupt. Look, I have a free guide that teaches you how to lose fat in three steps, just three steps that will burn the most amount of body fat and help keep it off. This guide is totally free. We're giving it to everybody right now. If you want it, click on the link at the top of the description below. All right, back to the show. Mm. Yeah, I don't, this one was really weird. Uh, we were um, last night, <clears throat> and we knew it was coming because like right around dinner time or so like that. He like he looks at uh, Katrina and I, he's like, "I'm gonna lay down. I don't feel so good." And Katrina looks at me and like, like oh, uh -oh, we, we just know. yeah, we just had this last week, and he's been good again." And I'm like, oh man, this isn't good. He's all quiet and cuddly and just wanting to lay and watch. And we're watching like, I don't know what Katrina was watching, some TV. It's like a show, like adult show. And he's like laying down watching. I'm like, okay, this is not good. <laughs> this is not normally something that would hold oh, his attention. Kiddo. And then uh, right before bed, she's walking in the kitchen and he's like, oh, my tummy hurts. And he just projectile vomited all over the all over the tile on the floor. <laughs> oh, shit. So we're cleaning it up, take him up to the bath and everything like that to clean him up. Um, but then, uh, woke up this morning and went to school. 
it was so funny though because uh you know that happened she cleans them up she takes them up to go to the bath i stay downstairs and clean up the kitchen and stuff and i come up and she's like laughing and i'm like what's going on and she's just like your son's too much so I've told you guys multiple times, like uh, like one of my proud dad moments or parent moment is the way we handled puking, that it's so like yeah you just act like okay, yeah like it's no big deal. So he's in the bath already in like a better mood, so that and Katrina's like, are you feeling okay? He goes, yeah, mommy. You know, sometimes you just need to throw up and then you get better. Yeah. And then it, she goes, <laughs> oh, she goes, them, by the she way. goes, oh, really? He goes, yeah. Uh-huh. Did I just teach you that? And she's, <laughs> she's like, ah, I think I knew that one. She's like, oh, he's like, oh, okay, yeah, mommy. Sometimes you just need to throw up one time and then you feel better. And so she started. Wow. And then this morning, woke up and uh, he had a little bit of a runny nose still. Uh, but then, which is also funny because the day before, he was in this mood of like, I don't want to go to school. School's boring. I'm like, when you when you say that? He only says that after a weekend when he's had two days off, right? And then he goes to school. And then this morning, Katrina's like, I think we should stay home so you feel better. I don't want to stay home. I want to go to school. Change his mind. Yeah, yeah. Oh, <laughs> 20, yes. 24 hours. But I found out why, though, because they were doing like some Rudolph, you know, project at the school because they're making like reindeer and he's doing, and he loves Christmas shit, right? So it's like, that's the real reason why he wants to go. Dude, my kids have been, mm-hmm. we've been sick for a month. Like, mm-hmm. like we had one cold. It started with it's going around right now. It started mm-hmm. with uh, my son. Then it went to my daughter. So there's like he's sick for a little while. It started getting better. And then she's sick for a little while. Then she starts getting better. And then it started again with him. And then my daughter and I had it. So it's like a whole month of people being sick. But finally, everybody seems uh, yeah. okay now. I've had a weird. Well, so Everett had to come home from school yesterday. I think I told you guys about like him playing and building a fort and all that. He oh got yeah, poison oak so bad. Oh. He's he's allergic to it. I'm pretty sure because it, it was like a systemic. It, like his whole body had like a rash, and then uh, finally he had to get like the oral steroid for it and everything, and take him in. But like, <laughs> poor guy, dude. I got home and he was just like, Ugh, it itches everywhere, dad. And he's just sit like sit there like watching TV. And so he's got to like. I think we're gonna hold him back one more day because it's just so uncomfortable for him to do anything <laughs> like getting up and. I've never had poison oak or poison ivy, but it looks. <laughs> miserable i had it real bad once and it was just like uh it was all over like my right side and then after that i didn't have it it was weird it was like immune to it after that a lot of times you are for him a lot of times people once they get it and then your body true about yeah your body adapts to it yeah it's like the you know there's some stories of people like eating little bits of it to try to get immunity yeah Yeah. to get that i told you guys about my uncle right my well he's he's passed away now but he's my grandfather's generation he came to this country these are old school, like from the hills, Sicilian, like poor, whatever. Came to this country and was working. Uh, I don't remember what he was working at some plantation or something up in the hills. And then went off and had to use a bathroom and wiped himself with some leaves because <laughs> that's what they do. <laughs> and used this, yeah, he used poison oak, I think, or poison oh, ivy. Wow. Oh, yeah, the had it all up his yeah, all the <laughs> <laughs> all up his crack. Bro. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I've, I've had it, I think, like three times, and the first time was really bad. The second time was mild, and then the third time was like almost nothing, and then never again. And we like played in it, like we grew up in it where I grew up. Oh as a yeah, kid. I can't keep him away from it. Yeah, you it's know? like he's just always and in the it. exact same way. That's we had all this acreage behind us so with trees, and we used to build forts and do exactly that. And it was like impossible. And as a kid, and like even though you got it, you still kept going back there. Yeah. And eventually got to a point where we, we wouldn't get it anymore. But it took, I think, like three times. But each time was like way less. The first time was probably, I remember how bad it was. And then the second and third time was like super mild. And then never again after that. Dude, I got mm-hmm. to tell you guys. So you guys know that I was on uh, C.T. Fletcher's podcast yeah, yeah. last week. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, what was that? Okay, well, that's because you're a legend. You yeah. know, you obviously know. Yeah, of, I know he is. Yeah, yeah. C.T. like yeah, pretty he's well. He's hilarious, too. Yeah. He's, and I, a lot of respect for him. Uh, just, just, he's just so, he's, he is who he is, right? But he's got this podcast called F Y'all. Right? <laughs> Fuck y'all. Yeah. That's the name of the podcast. <laughs> so I get on I love, there I love it, and it's a great time, Fuck right? Y'all. Him and his co-hosts are great and we're talking. And at one point, CT is like, overtraining is a myth. You can't overtrain. He goes, man, I don't, you know, he's, and he's talking shit, right? And so I'm trying to break down and explain to him. Uh, and he goes, he starts talking shit to me. He goes, yeah, in a great a bitch. way. Yeah. He, he's like, you know, you, you science guys. He goes, I used to make fun of you guys back in the day <laughs> with your Poindexters, with, with your, your big freak, rim glasses. Lab coats, you know, I kick your head up yeah, and I'm laughing. I'm like, Listen, I used to train people to have experience, so that's just the science guy. <laughs> but we're going back and forth, and I'm kind of explaining and overtraining, and, I, and I'm trying to prove my point, and I'm saying, well, whatever volume you started at, eventually you added more, right? You couldn't do all that at first. And can you train like that? No, no. And I'm like, well, that's because you're overtraining. But he still disagreed. Anyway, I read the comments under because he posts. They posted it on YouTube. They don't have a huge following on YouTube, but I'm looking at the comments, bro. These are like 
CT Fletcher like like, like diehards. Oh, they're yeah. like little drones. Dude. Are they roast you? Or yeah. what? Oh my god, he, this guy's it's just making cult. up for his lack of dedication. This and that. Like, oh my god, <laughs> oh, I'm, oh, reading, oh, wow, I'm reading the whole thing. Oh it's like, god. Yeah. Oh my god! Fighting for your laziness, huh? Yeah, like, oh, yeah. the comments are great. Yeah. Dude. Oh, so dude. Great. Oh, that's I, so when I talked to him yeah. too on the on a show, he said I could see why you were successful as a trainer, and I wasn't <laughs> because the way he communicates fitness, right? Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, but I bet you found a few versions of you that you probably helped out quite a bit. And he goes, Yeah. Well, that's, problem is, there's very few CT Fletchers out there. Yeah. You know, most people we're working with are just every day. But anyway, it's funny to see the comments, people. Talking crap, you know? Yeah. At one point, I made the, the point about, like, uh, lack of sleep. I'm like, what if you lost, you know, you didn't get good sleep one night? And we're talking about that in the comments. Someone's like, this guy's just mad because his wife won't let him have a full night of sleep. He's got to take care of the killer. Like, oh, my God. Bro. Relax. <laughs> Excuses. <laughs> Relax, dude. Oh, Excuses dude. are like assholes. Oh, oh my God, God, dude. You got to stay away from YouTube comments, bro. It's, like, addicting. There's a part of you that wants to see just out of curiosity, and then you go down the rabbit hole, and it's, like, all bad. There's that. some comments that could get under my skin, but most of them don't anymore these days. Most of them, I read them. And if it, you guys know that if there's, like, a comment negative, you know, that it's I'll like, typically screenshot and send you guys. Cause yeah. Yeah, it's it's good for a laugh, and you kind of know where people are coming from. It's like you know, at one point I was like younger and had like dumb ideas too. You know, it's yeah. like what are you gonna do? I've oh. tried to make the habit of uh, before I do like screenshotting or talking to like Katrina or somebody like just to work it out and then realize like what am I doing responding to this person like yep. if I catch myself starting to type something yeah. like that okay you got a reaction I mean for me to do that and then like unpacking going like what am I doing like. There's no reason for me to even respond to this. Like, I don't need to explain myself to this random kid. No, you know, yeah. in some mo yeah. mother's Knee basement. Jerk reaction. Nothing comment. better to yeah. do but talk shit to me on the internet. <laughs> you, know like, you know, I will say I've been. I think I brought this up already, but I mean, it's continued now because I've been doing this now for almost three months. The because we do talk a lot of shit about YouTube comments. The response I've gotten on this journey has been overwhelmingly positive. Yeah. Yeah. It's that was really That's good. That was refreshing. Cause I went into it like knowing I'm like, oh, here we go. I just can't put myself out there where I'm like yeah. document. Yeah, I'm, I'm coming from a, I'm coming from a weak place. Yeah. Like I let it go. You know what I'm saying? Here it comes. You know what I'm saying? So I was like all yeah. ready to be gassed up and everything. And I was like, oh wow, everybody actually's been pretty supportive during that process. And even like I said, I I definitely have brought it on myself with all the injuries and the setbacks and everything. I and, think that humanized you more than anything. Brought, obviously that, i mean obviously i think that's what has happened is that um i think people just over, i you know th there has to be there still is a lot of the fake bullshit there's a lot of everybody yeah. that puts out the best version of themselves right i have to look cool i've got to be the best lighting i got to be yeah. the strong I, and and it's like all that other stuff yeah which you're getting you're getting all the other stuff with me you're getting all the they would have edited that out and then just you know showed you your yeah. progression well yeah. the market i mean it, it rewards the fakeness so it's it, the incentives are all there right yeah. to put out your That's such a good point it's so it's just it's a self-feeding kind of monster even the market for authenticity because there is a market for authenticity. And so what people do is they fake it by putting forth something that they think is embarrassing, but you could tell it's, uh, it's, it's also fake, right? Mm -hmm. Like the, let me pick up my phone and cry, uh, you know, to the, to social media right now. Yeah. It's like, well, at some, you know, what, what point you had to stop at one point and say, I better record this, these tears yeah, yeah. and post the type of deal. So, but I get it. You know, nobody wants to post their worst. That's for sure. Yeah. Especially too, like the, you know, the, uh, you guys know, like when you're going through stuff like that, there's a bit of a, your own psychological battle that you're, you're dealing totally. with. And so to be, to be documenting it and having to share with the world, like, I mean, I, <clears throat> I was talking uh, off air to like Dylan going through this process. It was just like the shittiest part about this whole thing is that, you know, if this happened and I wasn't documenting all of it, I actually wouldn't even sweat it that much. I'd just be like, ah, whatever. I'll just take a few weeks off. You know what I'm saying? Like I've got my whole life ahead yeah. of me. I don't need to train for four weeks. So you can just recover this now. It's like, oh, I have this like you know, a, a incentive and a obligation to mm -hmm. put in document yep. content. And yep. so it's just like that part of it is the part that that's tough where in real life, I would probably, if I wasn't documenting it, I'd be like, ah, I just break for four weeks, but Talk, I can't do that. To the talking audience. about documenting in real life and stuff. What's up with this new, this audit of who are they auditing with the government where they came back? Pentagon. The, Pentagon. <laughs> the seventh, <laughs> the seventh audit seventh in a row. Failure of uh we can't account for anything 842 billion dollars they can't account isn't for? that yes. convenient yeah but they you know where that is by the way you guys know where that is a hush where money that, that's all that's 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 dark drug money, money. yeah that's dark money that all goes the above. Yeah, funding the, the funding wars deep and state funding, type of shit. yeah, yeah. like yep. shenanigans yep that's crazy yeah. that is so you know what would happen if the irs 
came to your business or just use a personal individual. Yeah. In fact, they're going to start auditing. I think what is it? PayPal and Apple Pay and shit yeah. like that. That's They've over already. I thought they are doing that. If the government can't like, if, you know, if they can't figure that out for the government, how is that supposed to? How are we supposed to come clean with our tax? Shit, it's crazy. not that they can't figure it out. <laughs> they, they I know they it. can't. Yeah. What I'm saying is like the standard has to be set, you yeah. know, and then uh, peer into. There's rig, no, there's no consequences. It's a rigged so game. That's that's why they keep it's doing. A, it's a rigged game. By the way, that's not their money. Everybody needs to understand. No, it's this. our money. The, yeah. the government doesn't yes, have money. That's the they, most frustrating we part. We have money. They use our money. So they just took your yeah, money. So explain to me why we should tax us yeah. of our yeah. money that went to something. We don't even know where it missing. goes. Uh, it went to go study, you know, you know, homosexual goats in Afghanistan. <laughs> <laughs> have you guys seen that? Have you guys seen the stuff that they spend money on? Uh, that is a, crazy. It's, yeah, it's absurd. Have you seen some of it? Well, I, yeah, take, think, take, they took monkeys and they gave them meth to see how they would react or something like that. They paid remote Weird. viewers to look at Mars. Yeah, dude. <laughs> you know what? I swear to God, look at the CIA. Yeah, they sent me that wait, 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 story. Wait, explain that. They, they the paid CIA for... used remote viewers. So these are like people who could like psychic, right? They could see far away. Shut your They to, paid to them look an at exorbitant Mars. amount of money for this. To look at Mars. Mars, yeah, and to tell them what they saw on Mars. It, like, come on, dude. <laughs> just, and, hey, just stop hey, it. At this point, it's a massive troll. I think it's just to fuck everybody, just it's, to mess with people. Be like, I think what just, it is, just, just be like, listen, probably. we can do whatever we want. We're going to do just You weird. know what I think it is? What? I think it's like, I work at the CIA. Adam's my cousin. And I'm like, Adam, you want to make yeah. some money? All right, bro, come on over. Dude, we're get your you. remote viewing we're, degree. We're going to yeah, promote right. you to remote view some shit, okay? Yeah. Just you make some stuff up. Don't worry yeah. about it. I'll give you 50 grand. We'll split the money. I see red oh rocks. My yeah. God, yeah. What did they Pyramids. say that they saw? They saw like, like a pyramid a, and like, uh, like an old civilization. Stop it. Dude. Yes. Yeah. Stop yeah. 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 Dude. Yeah. We're getting yeah. trolled. These are real documents. I think you can go on their website. Oh, here we go. In 1984, the CIA conducted a re remote viewing experiment as part of Project Stargate. Oh, this is old. Oops, okay. So they just released it. They <laughs> yeah, just like they just classified it. it. Oh, that, I was going to say, why are you guys even talking about it right now? No, because like, they, they just released it. Oh, wow. Yeah. To, you yeah. know this, that I think is also really Hilarious. brilliant. I, I who who was it who who figured out the time of if we let a certain amount of time go by, then people don't give a fuck anymore. Like that is oh, how they mastered that. Yeah. yeah, they've mastered like that. Could, imagine that if that came out that just happened six months ago. It's on yeah. every front news, and we're talking about it. Yeah. Oh my god, I can't believe they did that. Yeah. Oh, it's 1984. Yeah. And so we just move along and just keep going. And then something comes out for 1985. Like, what is the time yeah. that it takes for us to give? It isn't the 20 years. Don't they say it's the 20 years before they release something or something like that? I think it's a generation. They wait like a generation. I think they wait for the people to die that were a <laughs> part of it. it and then there's yes. no accountability. Yeah, the people that really died. cared. Yeah. yeah. The people that got murdered you can't, over You can't right? bring them in and question yeah, when, them. When yeah, exactly. was it that they, the CIA or that they said, yeah, we probably played a role in, J in JFK's murder? That was not that long ago. Very recent, yeah. That was very recent. Remember, that was a big concern. Conspiracy. That was the conspiracy. Sure That's where the word conspiracy theory came came from, right? <laughs> yes. yes, it was from from the JFK yes. thing, right? Yeah, and then was... and then ML, Martin Luther King, they they lost a civil lawsuit because they were involved in his death. That yeah. kid wasn't even that long. You know, what? I I think it's I think it's interesting just how many people don't know the origin of the word conspiracy theory. Yeah, they came up with it. Yeah, yeah. and no. why they came up with it, like. Because a lot of people say that as like this negative, like, oh, he's a conspiracy theorist. Like, oh, okay, yeah, so then you know he knows the truth about things like yeah. that, you mean? Because, you know, the government made that word oh, up, oh, right? To, to, to yeah, you, deter you from the truth, right? You thinking. What, yeah. was that, what was that meme? It's like, what's the difference between yes, conspiracy theory? Yes, I love theory, that one. Yeah, six and, months. Yeah, and the truth. Yeah, or a year or whatever like that. These days, it seems to be kind of like, that's crazy. Now, now they're saying, by the way, that, for example, COVID, like with almost, they're like saying now, this is the official, like, yeah, it probably came from a lab. Yeah. Probably. Hey, can you give me a can you give me a high level Lovely. overview of the article I sent to you and I didn't read? Oh <laughs> no, we don't want to get into that. Oh really? Yeah, that's too. Why? Why? Here, here's here's why I want to. So I like I I get people. Okay, so here's the gist of it. All right, here's the gist of it. This article is the gist of it is that there is a global capitalist cabal. Okay, so. And I, and that kind of makes sense, right? Like, like, well, like. I'll put my seatbelt on. Like, oh, yeah, yeah, just yeah, yeah. about to get yeah, yeah. it. <laughs> I didn't say it to you yet. I had to pass this guy first, <laughs> and then I'm relax over there. there. Takes over the yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> cabal. So, so, so now this kind of I get this part right. Like the the open markets now. Ever since the fall of the Berlin Wall, have really grown, and you have these like multinational companies that trade with each other, and, and you know they they run things, right? These companies around the world, especially in Western nations. Um, they work with each other, and, it, and the governments that they work under don't really make that big of a difference unless there's some big legislation. But 
basically it's like these big this cabal right and they run the show and what they do is they look at things and they say okay public sentiment is moving in this direction or that direction and if things start to look bad for them they'll give popular sentiment a quote unquote win to placate them and so there, what the article said is the win was allowing Donald Trump to get elected allowing that to happen everybody's gonna feel cool now but we're still gonna run the show we're still gonna do what we want, but we want, we need everybody to chill out and feel like they're, they're happy that they won. That was what the article. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Hey, sorry to interrupt. Look, we have a free guide. It's the benefits of eating whole foods. This gives you a shopping list. What foods are best for proteins, fats, carbohydrates. There's recipe samples. It's all based on real whole natural foods. And it's a free guide. It's totally free. You can get it. If you go to wholefoodsguide.com or by clicking on the link in the description below. Now, I, I get the the I get the 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 sentiment behind it because historically, kind of seems that way. Like no matter yeah. who's wins, seems cyclical. It's always the guy that's yeah. the, they're always kind of doing the same kind of thing. So, but that was the whole article was about that mm. that they yeah that they let that happen. Yeah, I, it was but that's sent, too like it was. Let's see. Well, I mean, it was sent <laughs> to me by someone who actually I yeah. think is pretty level headed, right? Who's somebody who doesn't isn't doesn't identify as left or right, and is always yeah. like suspicious of what uh, you know what we're being told and what's yeah. probably really happening. Yeah. Which I definitely uh, I feel that way. I feel like a lot of it's all uh, you know horse and pony show or whatever yeah. it's called. Like I think that everybody's <laughs> just like we're all being entertained. But really, behind the scenes, like moves, moves, moves are being made. The only reason why I, I maybe I don't full heartedly agree with that right now is for the first. It really felt like, and maybe that was that good of a job, right, to make me feel that way. But I mean, they made some serious attempts, like on his life, on throwing him in prison. Yeah. Like it felt like we were really trying to stop him, for, or somebody yeah. was really trying to stop him from getting in office, and it did not feel like they wanted that and it so it felt like whoever they are and this what's that quote uh is it bastia that said it's like uh none are more hopelessly enslaved than those who believe they're free so the argument libertarians have always made was that um that yeah. y y the illusion of choice is what keeps people you know quote unquote enslaved so they they have their winners on either side they allow us to fight over who we think is going to win ultimately they don't give a shit they don't care because they the person that wins is like cool we're still we're still going to run the show everybody feels better now and then oh everybody hates that guy all right we'll let the other side you know win now type of deal mm. that's what libertarians have been saying for kind of a long time i gotta show you guys and hopefully doug can uh pull this up this new technology I, saw, I have no idea like what application would be used with this technology it looked cool but i'm like why like you put so much effort into this it's like pixelated blocks like so you can uh whatever you do like gesturing wise with your hand or like with objects or whatever and you place it on this grid it'll elevate it like three-dimensionally oh, watching it okay so you can control the blocks with your hands remotely virtually. yeah Oh, and so it moves. It moves these like blocks up to the to the degree of where what you're. What would you use this for? Well, exactly. maybe not this specifically, but I could see this technology being a, like people like could tickle work, you. Yeah, people could work from far away if you really fine tune this and perform surgeries or you know hug each other or move boxes yeah. or something like that. I mean, you would use probably a robot for That's that, cool though, right? right? Which is it's just kind of weird. That yeah, it, but this is simulating your actual hand. It's like a it's like a three D etch a sketch like. <laughs> version that's wild it's weird it, it looks really cool i mean it's like a yeah. so I, i'm trying very I'm tr cool i'm but looking i'm trying to figure out maybe not this exactly but if they made it more like where it feels like the person's hand then i could see all kinds of well then that would be weird could you imagine like a, a, a like a version of you that could actually reach yeah. out like you could have like a like a big block that's all those pixelated things yeah you just like and this virtually i can like hug Minecraft you or shake person, your hand or, just like, that would be weird <laughs> it's so weird dude. i don't know <laughs> I don't know. Interesting yeah. though. That's super fascinating. Right. It is. I know. Hey, how do you get the funding? I don't know what to do? How, do you get how the much funding money? So, yeah, yeah. Exactly. How do you get Went funding? Into this? How, how do you get funding for that? Like, how do you pitch it? I don't know. Did you look at like how what the what the, like? Hey, you put like a table. You're like, hey, pass me the salt. It's like, <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, I couldn't make it to Thanksgiving, but here I am. I think that this this will lead to other stuff, though. Right? I mean, obviously it has to, right, Sal? I mean, otherwise yeah. it makes no, like who like who you spend millions of dollars so you could pass a little red ball back and forth with you. <laughs> yeah, cool, cool, bro. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I like I was racking my brain trying to come yeah. up with like application. I, just, yeah. I don't know. Well, speaking of like like ideas that didn't do so well, so a lot of the the shirt ideas that we have, <laughs> great. <laughs> what a beautiful trans. What a beautiful transition right there. <laughs> a lot of our uh, merchandise that. A lot yeah. of that's a great it's transition. Crazy. Can we just sale. call them and Can we, A lot of it are shirts that just didn't sell very so well. So, okay, we have to. I, but I think they're valuable. We, Our number one worst sellers. There, there, uh, there was a time when we we uh, uh, allowed Sal to put two it cents. It wasn't just that. It wasn't just me. <laughs> There's just one. There's one shirt that I said. Take a chance listen. on it. We used to let Sal sometimes pick like an idea. Of, oh, this is a great idea, I think. Uh, I don't know why I said and, this. And, <laughs> and because obviously he's one of the bosses and owners, he can do whatever the hell he wants. And so yeah. we'll get boxes of shirts that we, we right. open up. We're like, uh, I don't know, bro. I don't know if this is a thing. So we have this inventory, which is dead stock, right? So we, uh, I, I don't know if you guys even know. You guys know that, that that all that money back there is like lost for us because yeah. you can't write it off. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So like you, it's not like you you we've expend we spend that and it becomes a tax deduction right. for us at all. It's just like dead dead stock. So we got to get rid of it. And so uh, it's stuff that we would never put on the website typically to sell, but that we've made in the past when we had these random ideas. Maybe. <laughs> yeah. So you could get the collectors I they're, items. It, they're, I mean, they're, it's like fire sell, right? I believe Katrina yeah. and them are dropping like five dollars a piece. Oh, that's wow. it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think it costs us more to make. Well, them, one of the shirts sure. says car. Carnival King, because you guys call me that, because I always, you know, whenever yeah. we do some kind of weird game, I win. Yeah. Uh, so you guys made, you know. What else is there? Inside jobs. <laughs> <laughs> what are the other ones? What are some other ideas? You have? Hand jobs, a job, something like no, that. No, it's it. less handouts, more hand jobs. Okay. I thought that was a funny, uh, the, funny thing. This to was say. during the pandemic. Yes. It was during the pandemic when we were printing money like crazy. Also stressed out. Yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. It's it's stressed out, angry. Funny. Sal comes up with an idea to make a shirt. It feels it's like less, a less hand, Reno 911. Less carry. handouts, more hand jobs. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I could see somebody wearing that, no? <laughs> <laughs> it's not the, if you wear that shirt, you're a champion. Yeah. Uh, Someone's gonna wear that to one of our live events. Right? I mean, we have we have. We I have love so I do. So every now and then we do have stuff like this, and uh, when we get a chance to go to these live events, I, I, those people remember to like wear those, and I'm like, oh, this, that's like a real yeah. diehard fan yeah, right there. Dude. If you got that shirt, well, our original shirt was uh, zero Fs. I don't yeah. have to say the whole word. Uh, yeah. Literally said zero fucks. Yeah. Yeah. I might have been responsible for that. <laughs> yeah, we have, wore yeah. those to Adams. Competition, bodybuilding competition. Yeah, we yeah. actually showed up yeah. in shirts that said, "Yeah, that with everybody's just people. like, what is like, up with us? Uh, uh, moms, all confident. And, yeah. We were all confident. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 yeah it says it on the shirt. Yeah, yeah we have a hundred downloads. <laughs> yeah, we, were, we were nobody. <laughs> yeah, dude, we thought we were so awesome. I think Showed we had more that than shirt. that by that time. We, <laughs> yeah, we had a few. Yeah. We had a few. Yeah. I don't think we I think I don't think we ever had only a hundred. I'm trying that'd be an interesting thing for you to look back on Lipson and see what the original month of downloads. First like. episode download. I want to say we were we're getting at least a couple thousand. Yeah. I believe we were getting because we had we had my social media, which was not obviously not big enough to move. Well we had one episode that went viral. That's why it was the cross. Well, one. yeah, viral in in in, in, in podcast. Like, yeah, compared to what we had, right, it wasn't right. like viral. Not real. It, it viral. went it went uh, viral to us, but we would consider our worst episode today was did better than that. Of course. So yeah. um but we still thought we were badass. But I think I think I, don't know. I think, <laughs> oh, I think yeah. we were in the thousands. I think pretty early on, maybe something like that. Maybe. Hey, I, I found a, a cool uh, survey. Um, I want to see if you guys can guess what the survey said. So the title of the survey was "What Hobbies Women Find Most Attractive That Men Do." Woodworking. So what hobbies? Wow, you just answered that real Ooh. quick. I feel I like just, you look shit like this up. I, no, I just yeah. is that true? You probably I look this up. That's and you're true. I swear to God, I didn't look this up. Yeah, I just that, I just think that's true. Anything true? handy. So yeah. woodworking is one, two, three, four, fifth. So woodworking uh, is definitely up there. Okay, so let's guess here. Come on. Any uh, any other? Yeah, yeah. So other hobbies? Yeah. Okay, let me think. Weightlifting. No, not even out there. You no, know, weightlifting is that's I not a hobby. No, I can't believe that somebody would, they would put that. I don't out. think you that's consider stupid. that a hobby. Do you think weightlifting is a hobby? Well, I mean, there's another a exercise thing in here. That oh, there's a hobby. There is. I want. Yeah. Hold on. This is interesting. This is a cool survey. That's weird. Uh, that women, women, women. Yeah. What's number hunting? one? Hunting. Well, hold on. Back up. So is no. that on there? No, hunting is not on there, on there dude. Yeah, I, I don't think women think that's hot. Probably. probably cooking. Who are these women? Doug. Very good. That was number four. That's a good guess. So think real quick. Okay, grown man. You're you're going out with a girl. You meet up with her friends, and then they you, they find out a hobby about you. What which one do you think? Yeah, they'd of be course, like, oh cooking. Yeah, 
That's great. Do they like uh, drawing or art? Uh, is that in there? <laughs> I like his drawing. Oh, yeah. painting is Hugging. number se- uh, six. <laughs> okay, so yeah, playing six. guitar or music. Oh, yeah, oh, guitar. Yeah. Yeah. Music, very good. That's number three. Yeah, yeah, yeah playing music's yeah. always good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You just serenade them. Isn't that sure. funny? Half of these would make you a nerd in high school. Yes, but all of a sudden, as an adult man, it's like that's yeah. why Justin does so well. He's <laughs> maybe maybe Dungeons and Dragons, one of your other hobbies. What no. else is in there? <laughs> so, <laughs> so. <laughs> he's already got he guitar. He's, he's already got guitar and woodworking. Yeah, he's yeah, is, yeah. He, is he on any other? Is are any of us on any? Do any of us do any of these hobbies? I mean, we all. I'll do some of them okay uh, yeah. but number one I don't, you guys probably won't guess really yeah i don't think you will cuddling tell, not what no, that's, that's a hobby yeah. that'd be creepy what is it Come on, <laughs> what's tell your me. hobby i like to cuddle tell me what it is <laughs> reading oh god uh, we reading number that. one yeah, yeah we should have got that yeah yeah shame on us readers yeah. are leaders yeah <laughs> <laughs> okay i got i got qualms you know? just, just <laughs> yeah why are you such a bully i'm just yeah, yeah, saying yeah. <laughs> we should have got that there's, there's all these like shame know. on us for not getting reading. so reading was number one okay Sings. number two was foreign languages of course, right? You can speak different languages. That's I cool. actually wouldn't guess. that. Oh yeah, reading. I should have got foreign languages. What I about know. having an accent? Because huh? you don't even need to have like a different that's a language. That's the. It's, yeah. what's, hey, what's your just use a hobbies. guy with an accent. I, I practice accents. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that works sometimes. You guys ever did that? <laughs> no. What? what do you mean that works? Would you, you go to a bar and you just pretend that did you you're really? from a foreign country? Did you really? Yeah. What accent would you use? Uh, I would be terrible. I'd never be not all attractive. I wouldn't be able to hold the accent. No, yeah, it's like you know more more the British and in like Irish. You really did this. You really went to a bar and acted like an like one time, but like <laughs> it was it worked. It was hilarious. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> did you do like a good English so accent? Cool. It was like no, a it was terrible. One. It was awful. Cheerio. Yeah. You know, like yeah. so. if, if there was like a real English person there, they would have like known me. right away. Oh, yeah. Called you out. Yeah. yeah. So reading number one, foreign language number two. I got one and two, bro. I got one and two. Wait, wait, I like to one? read, and I can speak another language. Does it count the way you read? What other language? What do you mean oh, the yeah. way I read? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're not really a reader to me. Yeah, yeah. I, I feel like I'm more of a reader than you're a reader. Yeah, I think well. I think uh, articles, just reading articles. I don't well, know if that counts. Sal reading. likes being read, read too. Yeah, huh? <laughs> that counts. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Or or delegating to your wife to hey. read. Does that count? <laughs> hey, you know, I'm sure this counts. We do. We read books together. I audible. That doesn't even count. I don't even say I read because I just listen. I remember when we first started. I used to send Sal books to read, and then quickly I learned like, I'll just send it to Jessica. That's yeah. how that's that's how this that's is gonna get read. That's if right. I send it to him, it's not getting read. All right. So <laughs> third, playing instrument, fourth, cooking, then it goes woodworking, painting, writing, gardening, swimming, photography. There you go, Doug. Mm. This is a stupid one. Astronomy. That's an attractive hobby. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies. What are these hippie chicks? Ladies, like, if a guy says he's into on, astronomy, dude. run. I'm really into crystals. Hiking, archery, blacksmithing, and then, yeah. tra- and then, and then traveling. <laughs> I'm, d- I'm down with the black. Oh, traveling's a hobby. Yeah, I know. I, I did a little. Metal, I think metallurgy. that just sounds like you're wealthy. You know what, yeah, I mean? what do you like yeah, to yeah. do for fun? I like yeah, to travel. I, I travel. Oh, he's rich. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take that. That's anyway, totally what that is kind of yeah, cool, yeah. huh? Yeah, that was interesting. I know. I'd like to yeah. see one for men. Like, what are m- male attractive hobbies? Dude, we're that think? simple, bro. Oh, for yeah, for women. Feed us and <laughs> yeah. No. If it, like, what hobby would can be considered attractive? I mean, lifting weights. But For they're sure. not count, they're not counting that though. They should. They put swimming on here. Anything I say is going to sound sexist. So. What, 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 yeah, yeah. <laughs> I feel the same way. Too. I'm just keep my <laughs> it's mouth, like it's a trap. Just keep my mouth shut. Over yeah, there. it's a trap. I like <laughs> what they do. Everything. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Cooking is attractive of both sexes. I would say. I love that. Sure. You know what I mean. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I'd say, I guess I'm, I mean, I, I actually, well, motherhood is like super. I think that's, that's not a hobby, though. I know, but it's like watching watching my wife do that. It's the most attractive thing. I think dancing, so too. dude. Oh I my think. God. A good Dan- dancer. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's not bad. I love, yeah. That's not bad. Somebody <laughs> said that kind of creepy. Yeah, I know. <laughs> like I said, it's a trap, man. It's, yeah. what kind I don't of know dancing? how to not sound creepy what or kind of dancing. Yeah. What kind of dancing are you talking about? <laughs> I like that the dancing no pants too, dance. Justin. Yeah. <laughs> okay, bro. I like no, I, you know, mother you're right, dude. Motherhood. If I, I when for I me sur- personally, of all the things, I, there's two things actually that come to mind for my wife. Okay, that's probably the better thing to just go. By with. the way, I bet you both sexes consider that super attractive to see Katrina the opposite that. sex. Like Parent. to be with kids or to like kids or to play sure. with Katrina kids. says that to me yeah, all the time. So I, we that's a it's a it we that's a compliment we give each other. All that's the also time. a turn it's, off. If I if I like you know if, yeah. when I see somebody who doesn't like you and someone tells me I don't like kids I'm, something's wrong or with they're you. dismissive to a kid or Weird, something like that. Yeah. yeah. No, I I think uh, that I also find attractive because I mean obviously Katrina is uh, within the business and so uh, I get an opportunity to see. 
her have really important conversations either with staff or people that we have contracts yeah. with. That's attractive to me. They're attractive to watch her the confidence. Yes, yeah. Yeah, handle yeah. and navigate through a lot of those challenging conversations. Yeah. That's a that's an attractive quality. And then uh, of course, yeah, my wife. She 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 mm. thinks she's confused over this. I'll come home and she'll be cooking and doing something with the kids, and she'll be like, and I'm like, I can't. Like I'm, I'm on her. And yeah. She's like, I don't even have makeup on. I'm wearing sweats. I'm like, you got an apron on. You're cooking. You're with the kids. Like, there's nothing more attractive. Yeah, you're just taking care of us. So I wonder if that's all. You think that's uh, most men? Do you think that's a, a, a common? I don't know. That's a good question. Yeah, I think that there's a natural. It feels good to feel like you're being taken care of. Probably, mm -hmm. and I bet both sexes feel that. I don't way. think yeah, I knew. I don't think I knew that until one. we were parents. Like I don't. If you asked me at 29. Like, yeah. hey, what are you into? I wouldn't be like, oh, watching a woman parent. Yeah. <laughs> that wouldn't be like, <laughs> I wouldn't say that as like a yeah. top, you know, thing that I, was, I thought I would like. So that, that was, was a surprise. Yeah, yeah, that was a surprise. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. That's that. like I told you, like, Courtney taking care of her grandma. Like, I wouldn't have put that as like a, oh, wow, like I'm super attracted to that. You oh, know? But, yeah. But it was. You did say that. Yeah. Something Jessica pointed out when we first started dating is that, and I just, I was raised this way, but when we were, like, we'd be walking. And I would always, if she stand was closest the, to the street, on the inside of the curb. yeah, I would always stand on the inside of the curb. Yeah. Uh, and that's just, I was raised, I was just raised that way. But yeah. you, you take the dangerous side or whatever, Yeah, yeah. you know, anyway, yeah. It's, yeah. it's good stuff. Yeah. All right. You mentioned Organifi earlier because they also have gummies. I want to say they have a huge sale right now. Black huge, Friday. He, well, so our discount and their Black Friday discount. Oh, it's together. Ooh. Yes. Yeah. So you get 20% off with ours. Yeah. And then you could take an additional... 20% off with the Black Friday. Watch out. When you spend so, over 100, right? So if you go through our link, so $100 or more, you'll get 20 and then 20 again when you go to Organifi's wow. site. Stock up. Which wow. is, yeah, get everything. Get their shillage to eat before it runs out. I was going to say, you better do that, that fast because I'm pretty yeah, sure last year when they had out. a Black Friday, so they sold out of a lot of stuff. So mm -hmm. They sold out very quickly yeah. because everybody got super you know, excited or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, yeah. do you guys uh, um, see that? Was it Denmark? One of the first countries to pass a meat tax? What a meat tax? Yeah, let me look it up. I think what? It was, dang, they, they they just won uh, Miss Universe. It, did uh, they? Denmark? Yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. Really? I pay attention to things like that. <laughs> is that <laughs> true? Come on, fact check this guy. No, he is right. Yeah. He is, I, I did. I do remember. Okay, so Denmark, uh, starting in 2030, farmers will have to pay forty three dollars per ton of methane on emissions from livestock. What? This will double by 2035. I so I don't. This is. Ter in my opinion, terrible Why? policy. Yeah. You're going to get people to eat less meat, which means they're going to eat more of other shit, typically processed foods. Whatever you think you're saving in terms of the environment, you're going to lose in terms of poor health. It's so dumb. Yeah, I know. I know, crazy. Oh, yeah, yeah. I know. They're, they're taxing the wrong food. They're, they're the only, tax anything. They're tax the only the ones doing that. Oh, is that her right there? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. You were right, dude. How yeah. did you know that? Yeah. I'm mean, such a random guy. Justin follows. She deserved it. He follows. <laughs> yeah. Do you Universe. follow Miss Universe? Do they, is it? Is no, it I just, uh, it's on my feed somehow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just randomly give, just give away your explorer page I actually right got politicized that's why you saw it yeah well, oh, my, my it wife approved it got politicized how tell me oh god you really? know yeah dude how both sides politicized well, okay, things it was so it, stupid. which one was the one where the the transgender one i don't think it was miss universe it was like last was it? year yeah i know that, ha that that happened put doug like, put transgender miss universe and see if that was if it that miss was, universe i didn't know what it was i don't think it was i thought that's what you were actually talking about at first uh, oh maybe, maybe. 23 did they win or they competed. Oh, I could think they competed. So yeah. that's what the tra that's what it was. It's like, oh, uh, a biological woman won Miss Universe, yay! So like making a political thing. Uh, it's that's like, all right, everybody, relax. Whatever. I know. Oh, okay. That's yeah. What, that's what you mean by it. That's okay. it. Okay. I think that's why you probably saw it, right? It was in your. It was like I political commentary. It was just there. Trying to back you up. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. Trying to help him out. It's that's totally. Wrong. One time we'll play that game where we take everybody's explore page and show what they do. Money's like all all basketball and cars right now. Is it's it really? Like, yeah, yeah. It's, it, it, was, it, it used to be a lot of bulldogs, but I'm, I haven't been on my my bulldog video kick mm. in a while. Check and watch. Well, I don't go. I'm not barely ever on Instagram because I don't even use my page. Uh, I just use X. Um, but and X, it's all like news. It's all like news of what's going around the world or whatever. Do you know but social media is so <laughs> negative, man? Yeah. Do you know the uh, the stats on that? I mean, uh, we talked a lot about when uh, Musk bought it and it went through this like transitional period yeah. of struggling, and then come, is is X like thriving right now? Is it their like, usage is up? They're all the uh, advertisers that said that they would boycott them now have come back. 
I don't know what that means in terms of profitability, but I do know that their um, that their usage has gone up quite a bit, and they definitely, especially after the election. I, People now see them as like, oh, I you feel guys, like it's got to be doing good them, because I think much. it would be the top of the news if it was struggling. That's what I, f- I feel like if there well, was an opportunity. Tech Crunch always tries <clears throat> to give to, them a black Yeah, <laughs> so I, I feel like if it was really struggling, right? It's, I'm trying to bring. Yeah, it does. It, it says is, their revenue, but is that profitable? Compared, yeah, billion, no, no. Com- compared to previous years. Yeah, it could post a loss. I don't know. It's still far from profitability, but it wasn't doing good before either, was it? When it was Twitter. No, no, no. It was, that was... Wh- but I know wh- usage is up uh, quite a bit. Yeah, it doesn't tell me anything. No. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But That's, I don't know. No. But social media is so interesting. It's such a negative... And trying to control your algorithm is so hard. Because your brain automatically, you hover and click on shit that's alarming. And the next thing you know, algorithm changes. Yeah. And then it's in your face and it's hard to reverse out of. I get all these like metal videos now where they try and like cover pop songs and stuff. It's like a whole new genre. You've seen a few of those, but there's some guys that are really talented out there. Uh, Oh, the pop guys that mix it. They they take pop songs and they turn them into metal. Dude, there's some really talented guys. Really. Like there's some guys that are so talented. There's two of them in particular that I follow that I know you follow that I would probably consider going to like a concert to watch them do that. Yeah, almost like a full Yes, yeah, like a full like give me I'll, everybody's, for a couple hours watching you take some pop song and do it in disturbed voice is fascinating. I feel to like me. they could even do it live. Like somebody throws an idea out there yeah, they just do and it. they could just come Have up you, with you it. know what he's talking about. I do, I do. Yeah, it's so I've been listening to Christian metal. I've been working out to that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's dude, freaking I, dude, it's heavy. I can send you some heavy I can send you a bunch of bangers. Dude. <laughs> hey, these guys don't believe me, Justin. It can, it's heavy dude. It's not that the, I don't believe the you. The lyrics, though, you know? I don't believe you. <laughs> I mean, it's not bad. It, there's some heavier Christian metal than, than actual, like, satanic metal. <laughs> <laughs> I will I will prove it, too. And it's really be- much better messaging. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's much better it's messaging. It's less, um, <laughs> you know, it summoning, summoning a evil better power, murder. for sure. <laughs> Way better power. Yeah, 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 you yeah, lift yeah, the yeah. weight with, with uh, holiness, not, <laughs> not anger. I have, yeah, um, exactly. I have a shout-out that I want to give, and then we could also uh, talk uh, briefly about it, just because I thought it was interesting. Um the shout out is Chris Williamson and his uh, interview with Matthew McConaughey. I'm watching oh. it. So good, dude. Yeah. He's just, he interviews people so well. He's so talented. Uh, I don't, I don't listen to a lot of like interview type podcasts uh, that often. It's just not, I haven't been listening to podcasts really much at all. I tend to bounce back and forth between books, music or podcasting. I can't do all, all the above, but I did tune in to this one. I'm listening to it. I'm not done with it. But such a good podcast. And uh, the part that I'm at or I just passed was him uh, talking about his first, you know, his, you know what his first appearance was, uh, Matthew McConaughey's? No. Dazed and Confused. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. That was his first? That was his right. first. And he, he tells- was, He was like a dirtbag. <laughs> yeah, right? yeah. Well, it's kind of a cool story. Yeah. So he tells us, I, I didn't know this whole backstory. I guess it's in his book. Uh, yeah. it, it, the, the backstory is- he how he got that was like an introduction from his bartender friend introduced him to a, I think a director or a producer who basically got drunk with him all night had a good old time and was like hey have you ever thought about acting and he's like oh I've done a couple of modeling things this and that and he's like he's like show up at nine o'clock tomorrow morning this thing we've got something for you and he basically for that that part it was going to be more like an extra he was he had like three lines and he and he and he crushed it. He crushed the appearance. He crushed the lines, and like he tells the whole story. How he got, and then they like add, they kept adding to the storyline. So they wrote more. Lines they wrote for more wow. for his character to fill gaps, and he just like off the cuff. Wasn't he the, so the scene? The, you know the, the famous line where he's like he yeah. talks about uh, the high school girls. Oh, he's okay. uh, what a, yeah, yeah. You know, the, my favorite thing about high school girls. So I get older, they that stay, was, they so stay he, the same. He talks about that as like a, I forget what he the term he used for like there's uh, every movie has a, a character's line like that that like defines the yeah. character, and if you can hit that, it's like this big That's deal. It. So he hit that, and then the other part where he rolls up and he picks up. The, the redheaded girl, he tells you, I want you to ditch the geeks and get in the back and whatever. That was all off the cuff and made up. Oh, wow. And so they they basically told him like, hey, you want- Run with this. Yeah, yeah, he's like, hey, tomorrow, come back. We want to add this scene. Basically, just kind of give him a rough, like, rough idea of like, you're going to pick up these girls, nothing else. Yeah. And he had to like come up with that. Just and he's like, it. everybody yeah. was laughing. And he's like, everybody- And so that was like what made him. Like that hit- 
the fact that he was able to do that, do that, and then of course he got other parts. Some uh, of those movies know. you watch them now, and I just look at them like, God, they're creepy. Like, <laughs> yeah. what in the hell? Well, you could just get away yeah. with different stuff back then. What you could say, I, now I, we, I just didn't get it as a kid, though. You know what I mean? Yeah. I didn't get it. Like Jessica and I were watching this one. I don't remember what it was. This old, it was like an eighties whatever, and the, the the teacher was flirting with the student, and it was all like accepted. And I remember watching like as a dad now. Yeah. Like what the hell? Like, I would kill somebody <laughs> if they talk to my daughter like yeah, you can't, so, can't yeah. show my kids porkies. Yeah. So <laughs> that's a terrible choice. <laughs> porkies. Yeah, oh my was, god. Didn't, didn't do that one. Yeah, Thanks but check it out, right? It's at Chris uh Will X. Well he's mo he's modern wisdom. So Chris's uh podcast is called Modern Wisdom okay. and it's one of his recent ones. He just did Matthew McConaughey. Um so specific obviously I think we've I've shouted out Chris uh his page already, but I personally think he's the best interviewer in the game. I think that, and if you don't think that, I believe he's on the mission to become that because his the, his uh, his prep that he puts into it, um, the job. questions that he asks are like they're really really yeah. good. And there's they're already and uh, the visuals and everything now. Oh well, yeah, then he I mean his yeah, yeah so what does he drop like fifty grand it. every time he does yeah. a a set you know that he he's puts committed. together. Yeah, he's awesome. So check that out. Hey, real quick, uh, ButcherBox delivers grass-fed meat, crate-free pork, wild-caught fish to your door. Great prices, healthy meat, healthy protein. And if you go through our link, butcherbox.com forward slash mind pump, new people, new users will either get a 10 to 14 pound turkey or an eight pound spiral ham or five pounds of boneless turkey breast for free in your first box plus $20 off. Again, it's at butcherbox.com forward slash mind pump. All right, back to the show. First question is from Jasper Morrow, 3165. Why was muscle confusion a popular thing once, and why do I still hear about it sometimes? Because there's some truth to it, that's why. <laughs> yeah, but- Like many things. Somebody- in Those infomercials- They really did a, They were really smart with branding and marketing. So there's, there is value to novelty when it comes to exercise. Um, so, you know, if you do the same kind of workout all the time, it is true that you'll your body will- slow down how it responds. Now, now, depending on the workout, this can happen more or less, right? Some exercises, this will happen relatively quickly. Other exercises you could do for the rest of your life, continue to see benefits, but there is truth to novelty. What they did with brilliant marketing was they called it something called muscle confusion. And they said, you got to confuse the muscles to get them to react. Wow. To, yeah, and it was just brilliant marketing. But and, and like I said, there is truth to it, but there's also... There's more truth, I would say, and more value in getting good and practicing exercises over and over again. Mm -hmm. So although there's truth in both of them, uh, you would be, I, I, I would never recommend somebody do a different workout every time they worked out no. to take advantage of novelty. No. That That's the, that to me is the, I mean, I think there's more than just truth to muscle confusion. I think there, uh, there's a tremendous value in really grasping and understanding this. Yeah. Now, I think uh, I was guilty of taking it too far. I've admittedly talked about how I used to brag about how every workout I ever did, I'd never had done before, right? Everything was, every workout was so unique. Uh, so I took that, that idea of muscle confusion to the extreme. And I think because of that, uh, I lost a lot of value, a lot of gains I could have been making. So there's tremendous value in the point that Sal's making, which is it's important that you become uh, proficient at these big movements, right? Learning how to squat, deadlift, overhead press, bench press, row. Those movements are are very technical and have a lot of room for you to practice for a very long time and get good at Years. It. Yeah, years. Now, once you've reached levels of where you've gotten really good at those movements, then it becomes really important to understand the muscle confusion or novelty point, which is if I've been doing said workout, and I think this becomes more important, less about the exercise and more about the way you structure your exercises, meaning sets, reps, and the way you train, like your split or your full body. If that looks always the same and you've been in that way for months, one of the quickest ways that I can show somebody results is by switching them to something so different, mm -hmm. right? So if you always train like a, a, a power lifter where you're lifting in the low reps and the big, the big movements. I all of a sudden take you to all this, you know, bodybuilder type stuff and supersets and boy, that'll really, that's so novel that confuses the muscles so much that it will stimulate growth and is, is really valuable, but it's important that you then stay there for a little while before you move out again I, to reap the benefits. I definitely think for most people it's overstated, right? I think for most yeah. people, because they've sold it so hard, 
people don't stay long enough in the squats and the bench presses and the rows and the you know overhead presses because they need to change things up all the time. Like uh, you know, what, what Adam's saying is great. Like novelty be- is often introduced or should be introduced often with just your reps yep. or your tempo or your rest periods um, or where you place the exercise. Like, you know, maybe you always start your, your chest workout with bench press, which is a foundational movement. Now you want to add some novelty. Maybe you make that the third exercise. Like yeah. now you've introduced so, some novelty. It just seems to me too, like uh, you're, you're a little bit more reactive in terms of like what you're introducing your body versus proactive where I'm like focused on improving and dialing in and, and um, increasing my proficiency uh, mm-hmm. in certain movements. So the skill of it increases. I don't think your skill necessarily is going to increase with that methodology. Whereas your body's getting steam Stimulated and you know you're 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 sort of like making initial progress, but it's it's fleeting. You're not going to keep keep making uh, progress. Next question is from Megan Meyer Racing. Is it okay to give kids protein powder? I hope yeah, so. that's fine. I hope so. There's no, it's protein. Uh, there's nothing <laughs> wrong with it. Now, <clears throat> now that being said, like I, I wouldn't replace uh, good quality whole food with protein. I think the best ways to use protein. For children, there's two. One is if they're just not getting adequate protein, which is rare, but you may have a, a situation where you're, you're, for whatever reason, your child isn't getting adequate protein, in which case your doctor will probably recommend that you supplement uh, protein in their diet. The second is using protein to make uh, treats and snacks for them that are better than what might be available. Like, for example, I love using protein powder to make like popsicles. Um, I love that with my kids. So now they get to eat a popsicle. But instead of it being like this, you know, sugary whatever, it's uh, you know, chocolate, you know, bone broth protein or whatever, and and the kids love it. They get a little extra protein. It's better for them. They don't get the energy crashes. So I think that's that's wh- where you'd want to do. But there's nothing inherently bad about protein powder or dangerous. It's not like a medication where you know adults are okay and kids aren't. Did you see what I made last night? No. Yeah. So I posted. Uh, obviously, I'm posting all my meals right now. Uh, peanut butter. Uh, protein muffins and that's what max had for uh breakfast this morning so w- ironically though he's told mommy these are sweet <laughs> which i think is hilarious <laughs> but i i love what you just said so i think we do a pretty good job um of he eats enough meat that i don't need to add more protein we do it like with treats like that yeah. it totally makes a muffin or a cookie or something that like his version of all those things he's so used to ours this is also i think this is attributed to his natural uh, regulating himself with the sweets because ours are so tamped down that when he has like a real cookie from somewhere else, he doesn't even want more than like half of it because it's like, mm-hmm. oh, wow, this is like overpowering how sweet it is. So we've used it more like that because he already eats enough meat and eggs and stuff in his diet that he's probably hitting his his protein intake. I'm not concerned about that and we're not seeing anything deficient at all. Um, so I don't, I don't add it to the diet with the intent of, oh, I need to get his protein intake. I do it for exactly how you just suggested it. And I think it's uh, been wonderful, but I do understand this question potentially coming from what if you do have a kid who is, doesn't want to eat meat and you have a hard time getting them to yeah. do that, then, then this makes sense. It's a valid option. Especially yeah. if you have a, I could see more value with teenage kids. Like if you have a teenage kid who That's plays sports. Yeah. Yeah, because the demand uh, physically is is really increased and and they're growing and it's like and I know they're eating uh, meat, but they're making those decisions at school and they're eating. They're they're definitely carb focused and drawn. So to um, supplement with protein powder is just something that we've done. And and it has made quite a difference in their, um, you know, building their muscular physique. So it's early access to Black Friday, all maps, programs, all bundles. 60% 60% off. Also, if you get a bundle, you'll get 10 entries to win. If you buy a program, you'll get five entries to win. Everything else, one entry to win. Five days at the Mind Pump House in Park City. It's got a gym. It's got a cold dip. It's got a sauna. It's got red light therapy. It's all kinds of great stuff. Five-day vacation hooked up with $1,000 for travel accommodations as well. Early access, Black Friday. Go to mapsfitnessproducts.com. And then use the code Black Friday for the 60% off and the entries to win uh, a vacation at the Mind Pump Park City House. All right, back to the show. Next question is from Sammy Girl DC. I hired a trainer and they have not shown up due to sleeping in, etc. I'm frustrated. How do I just quit? 
I feel like I'm quitting on myself. Any advice? <laughs> you didn't quit on yourself. You yeah, have a shitty trainer. Yeah, yeah. I'll go to the boss. I mean, you go to the, obviously if this, this you, trainer- you, you are entitled to a refund for the unused sessions. Yeah. And then find yourself a trainer that shows up. Yeah. Like, that is terrible. That's, I mean, uh, if you go, if this is in a in a, a big box gym, you can go to the GM or the, the fitness manager and yeah, you're not only will you get the money back on this, but they will hopefully- ref Just set you, with, set you up trainer. with their, like this, this is obviously this, uh, in my career, this has happened before, right? Like it's- I didn't bat a hundred percent with all great trainers that always work for me. You hire someone you don't know sometimes if they're going to be unprofessional like this, but this absolutely has happened where yeah. someone comes to me and they're like, Hey Adam, um, you know, so-and-so, you know, they were late to their first appointment, which was okay. But then it was a second appointment like that. And I feel like they haven't done my, and I'm like, Oh my God, right away. I take care of them financially. And I go, you know, and then right away, because of that experience, trainer. I tap my best guy or girl and go, listen, I need you to take care of this client because so-and-so fucked it up and we need to make it right. Yep. So could you do this as a favor? So normally that's your, your a shortcut to the best is to go in there and express uh, your concern about this. Um, and then they'll hopefully set you up with a better. When trainer. I was a trainer, if I, uh, missed the session, which was very rare. But if I did, I gave them a free session and, and always, every single time, even if they objected, you know, uh, you know, you're going to get a free session. Um, cause that's a big deal. Like the, mm. the person trying to get in shape, trying to exercise, just them make like making the decision to start and then hire a trainer and they maybe have yeah. struggled with fitness for a long time. There's a lot of barriers they overcame just to be there. Yeah, and, and then you're not showing up. Yeah. Like, no, no, no. Like that's a big like that's a big no no for me as when I was a gym owner and gym manager. Big no no. And I would do exactly the same thing. I'm like, you're gonna get taken care of. So. Yeah, yeah. Do your, this is not you quitting on yourself by any means, but this is obviously yep. I mean, I would be almost grateful that you found you found this out early enough because it sounds if they I mean, how you do anything is how you do everything. So if this is how you, if this is your trainer and this is how they run things, they probably sh suck at writing a diet. They probably suck at programming too, because that to me, like step one, you don't even have to be good at those super things. Basic. Show up, show up, be on time, be professional. <laughs> yeah. um, I can help you be good at all the other things like that. If they're not even doing that part, they're probably shitty at the rest. So, you know, get, get rid of them, get somebody else. Next question is from Tyler Hubble. Since we are in the midst of cold and flu season, how should we adjust training, nutrition, and lifestyle habits when sick or key things to think about to help reduce the risk of getting sick? So let's start with reducing the risk of getting sick. Um, missing sleep and overtraining are like great recipes for, right. for weakening your immune system. Yeah. In fact, when I overtrain, I almost always guarantee that I'll get sick. Almost every single time. In fact, if you look at like athletes, yeah, you're super vulnerable. Yeah, you look at athletes or people training for a marathon or bodybuilders before a show. Like anytime you see somebody in that high stress, training really hard, eating low calorie, uh, the the rate of illness goes through the roof. So, if you want to reduce your risk of getting sick, besides getting adequate nutrients, because yep. um, you don't want to have any deficiencies, like vitamin D deficiency is common in the winter season. Um, then don't overtrain, don't overdo it, right? Now, when you are sick, you take time off or you just move in a very light, low intensity way to make yourself kind of feel good. Training or exercise, especially when you're trying to induce an adaptation like strength or endurance, is a stress on the body, okay? That's, that's why your body adapts. It's because it's a stress that your body is trying to adapt to so that it no longer becomes a stress. Well, if you're fighting an illness and then you stress yourself with damage, you've opened the door for the illness to take hold. This is like, if you feel like you're, uh, I don't know, I might be fighting a cold. If you want to get that cold, go work out real hard. Like yep. you're going to guarantee yourself yeah. that you're going to get sick. I'd say that's probably the biggest thing that's changed for me is, is I've gotten older and more mature, mature with my working out is, if, and this is the, that time where if like Max is sick, I feel like my throat's getting a little itchy. I feel fine, but I notice that. I'm already low calorie because I'm dieting. Like that's the day I'm like, well, today, tomorrow will be a good day for me to take off. Like I'm not going to go like, let me see and make sure that I'm not starting to get a cold and let me go take everything. And, and then what do you, uh, I mean, this is at the point, uh, where are you, are you taking, uh, you know, doubling up on vitamin D? Are you taking any vitamin C? Are you, are there certain supplement glutathione? Are there certain supplements yeah. that, 
you Zinc, uh, yeah. you know you know that you are susceptible of maybe catching something that you all of a sudden will start to ramp up. Or I know you're good about stuff. Yeah, vitamin D, zinc, um, glutathione. I'll I'll, I'll use those. Um, Especially I'll, if you're traveling on an airplane mm -hmm. too, yeah, that's because any one. deficiency in those really hampers your ability to fight off uh, um, any type of viral infection. Good sleep um, and maybe elderberry. If I start to feel like I'm I'm getting something, which has got some golden seal is another one. Echinacea for some people, for some people doesn't really do yeah. anything. Uh, but uh, I mean, the, the main thing here is to make sure that you're rested and not overtrained because that kills. Uh, that'll kill your ability to fight anything. I, I can't tell how many times I thought I was getting something, mm -hmm. worked out real hard, gave myself whatever it was. Yeah. way worse. I know. Yeah, that's almost guaranteed. I've, I've learned to rest. Yeah, it's it's a hard thing to do, and I know most calls we get are just trying to get people to back off training a bit so they can you know recover. No different when getting sick, and you know, it, unfortunately, like so here we get sun still, and so yeah. I'm out, when anytime I get sick, I'm out on my porch and you know absorbing that sun or maybe some light mobility, but that's it. All right, I know you liked that episode. If you did, check this one out. 30% body fat. For men, this is way too high. This is actually a bit high for women as well. So in today's episode, we're talking about how you can go from 30 to 10. What is 10% body fat? This is when you have a visible six pack. Can you go from 30 to 10%? Yes, it's possible, but not if you guess along the way. So we're gonna talk about how you can do that in today's episode. Now there's a huge range right of like body types yeah you know, some people can run uh a little bit heavier uh and or a little bit higher body